Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Hope everybody's weekend is well so far. And um, uh, well, I'll just say this: <clears throat> as long as there are um, issues going on in the in the body of Christ and and things that uh, we should. Um, be wise enough to deal with, I believe, uh, or refuse to deal with, or as long as there's foolishness and compromise um, in the in the church, I'm gonna always have something to say, and it just is what it is. So, um, some of you may not like it. Uh, what's up, Henry? What's up, Mark? Uh, some of you may not like it. Some of you don't agree with my approach. That's fine. Uh, you don't have to listen. You don't have to watch it. You don't have to tune in. You don't have to comment. That's fine. But uh, once again, uh, what's up, Manuel? Once again, we are uh, faced with a situation. Hello, dear. I'm on live. Oh, hello. <laughs> uh, once again, we're faced with a dilemma um, or a situation. Um, and unfortunately, I believe it's, it's one of those things where inconsistency uh, seems to be um, prevalent um, in, in 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 the church today. You know, uh, of course, we're not we're not perfect. Uh, we're 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 not going to ever be perfect in this life on this side of the of the, of the cross and on this side of glory. Um, but that does not mean we should not strive for it. it does not mean that we should um, make excuses. When we when we do see imperfections and issues in our lives that need to be that need to be dealt with. So anyway, um, I have um, it's been brought to my attention um, and it has gone on online and on social media that um, John MacArthur and um, the Masters University. Um, has a has an event coming up a matter of fact next week and in that um, Grey's Anatomy uh, ABC Studios Chandra Rhimes um, they're going to be filming um, and taping uh, an episode there now if you don't know much about Grey's Anatomy I'll just tell you to google it uh, I, I will tell you this, uh, it, it supports the homosexual LGBT agenda full bore. Um, it is anti-Christian, anti-Bible, uh, so much so if you uh, say anything about th that particular um, worldview and ideology, that Grey's Anatomy um promotes and, and supports, then you are, you are an enemy. Uh, you are basically to be shunned. How do I know that? Ask Isaiah Washington. Ask Isaiah Washington what happened to his career. That man's career has not been the same since he made the statement regarding homosexuality. Now, um, how he may have said it, how it was delivered may, you know, may have been wrong or could be up for debate whether it could have been said or couched better, but um, it, it was seen as homophobic. It was seen as, as uh, unloving and judgmental. And so he lost his career. Um, I mean, you, you don't even see him in, 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 in any TV shows or, or movies. You don't, have to, you don't have to take my word for it. Check it out for yourself. Just Google Isaiah Washington. And, and look up his information, look up his, his movie, uh, his, his movie career and look up the things that he's done. Um, and you, you'll see that his career ended, uh, regarding his, his statement, uh, re, uh, re, pertaining to one of the cast members on, on Grey's Anatomy and they fired him, they cut him loose. So, um, and again, his career has not been the same since. So anyway, um, uh, Grey's Anatomy there's a letter, um, and I guess this letter leaked, if you will, um, and I'll read it. I'll read it for those who may not be aware. But what, what surprises me 
And what is unfortunate, uh, once again, is the church's response to worldliness and compromise when it is right in your face. Worldliness, compromise, and inconsistency, and even the defense of such seems to be um, seems to be par for the course if you want to be among the who's who, or if you want to be sitting at the at the big kids table. Um, because I, I don't understand for the life of me how this could be given a pass. And so, so you know, here, here's here's my appeal. I'm waiting for people like Phil Johnson and and Todd Friel and Daryl Bernard Harrison, uh, these three uh, brothers to respond to this. Because if you tell me that social media causes division, if you're telling me that the SJW agenda and Marxism and, and things of that nature is causing issues in the church and causing the church to be divided, then I, I don't know what John MacArthur is doing. I don't know what, what the Master Seminary or the Master's University uh, is doing when you allow the world, when you host the world and their demonic, ungodly, uh, unbiblical agenda at your campus. I'm I'm just waiting for somebody to 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 help me understand biblically how that is defensible, how how a TV show who parades lesbianism, homosexuality, transgenderism, how how that is to be given a platform when when the Bible tells us how we are to shun that. How, how we're not to even be associated with that. But yet we give people a past that we admire, that we like, that we respect. But see, had that had been Joel Osteen, or had that had been one of our um, infamous Bible teachers, we, we, would, we would have nailed them and hung them high, no question. But we seem we seem to get people to pass, uh, and this is in our reform circles more so. I'm talking to those of you who 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 hold to reform theology, but your orthopraxy is deformed because how you apply the truth it seems to only work or it's only applicable um, to those that you want it to be applicable to. And um, so I'm going to read this article and then I'm going to um, share some text and then I'm also going to play an audio because, you know, like me, I, I, I want to have my facts together and, and I've answered some people's questions and, and I understand, I understand that, you know, this is not widely known, but it's out there. And the reason why a lot of this stuff goes under the radar is because when you have a huge ministry like Grace Community Church or a huge ministry like Grace to You or a huge, you know, uh, uh, educational uh, institution like the Master's Seminary or the Master's University, when you, when you have such large and uh, humongous ministries and, and things like that, then you can kind of like just ignore the little people like myself that don't have huge platforms, that don't have a huge following. And, and so, but it doesn't negate and it doesn't diminish the fact that it's wrong. It just shows us, to be honest with you, that power and prestige still have... Uh, crept his way into the church and we don't treat each other equally. We'll put people on pedestals. We'll put people on platforms and positions <clears throat> and give them passes that you and I would not get a pass for. In this article, I'm going to read and uh, this, is, this comes from uh, 
worldview worldwide. And and you may have issue with Brandon House's um, ministry or his his uh, organization. That's another discussion, another topic for another time. I, I don't I don't even I don't even um, try to get entangled with that because facts are facts. So. Evan, you said my hope is that this is a matter of knowledge and timing. Uh, if not, a response in the defense of the gospel should be forthcoming. Yeah, um, I, I'm going to I'm going to respond to it, and um, and hopefully, you know, I'm looking for a response from those who who definitely know about it. And, and I'm going to play the audio because I have a phone conversation that was recorded that was given to me, uh, confirming confirming that the school is well aware of Grey's Anatomy coming to their campus and they welcome it and have no problem with it. And, 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 and on the call, you're going to hear the reasons why they're allowing Grey's Anatomy to come and film at their, at their campus. But let me read this. Uh, I'm quoting two people I know. One of them, Pastor Sam Jones, called John MacArthur's Masters University this afternoon. This is dated August 2nd, 2009, 2019, excuse me. 2019. Uh, two people I know, one of them, Pastor Sam Jones, called John MacArthur's Masters University this afternoon to confirm what was thought to be impossible. Pastor Jones talked to a guy named Mike that confirmed that indeed the Masters University is renting space to Gray's Anatomy to film on their property. Why? This show has promoted the transgender agenda, LGBTQ agenda, and many other things contrary to what I thought John MacArthur and his ministry stood for. I thought it was MacArthur that warned us over and over about letting the culture into the church and evangelicalism. Pastor Sam Jones called me after his phone call with Mike at the Masters University, and the conversation was very odd and did not go well because of Mike's tone and pragmatism. I think Pastor Sam will be uh, will be speaking to the issue on his radio show soon. When I first heard this report about the Masters University and Grey's Anatomy, I thought it had to be a joke. But Pastor Sam confirmed in the phone conversation with the Masters University, this Masters University staffer rather, that it, it is very much true. In fact, Sam told me that the staffer told him this was beta testing. What does that mean? Is this going to become a common practice? Now, I don't know what beta testing means. Somebody tell me what beta testing means because when I when I spoke with someone else who uh, sent me an audio of the conversation that they had with one of the uh, Master University staff members, they said the same thing. That this is this is just beta testing. I don't I don't know what that means. And so what what I want to do. Oh, he's definitely slipping away, Jonathan. And he's been slipping. I, and I honestly believe, I'm going, to, I'm going to go on record and say this. I honestly believe, based on statements that MacArthur has made over the years, that, that there could be something going on with him mentally. And I'm not saying that to, to be accusatory. I, I'm, I'm saying that because when you make statements like one minute, you say, for a Christian to bake a cake for a homosexual wedding is sinful and it can cause the homosexual quote unquote couple to see that as license or an agreement to what you're doing. Then later you say, though, it is not sinful for a Christian baker to bake a homosexual wedding cake for a couple. Because you equate that to giving them a serving of food at a restaurant. Then you'll say, how can anybody support and, and vote for Donald Trump one minute? And then the next minute you'll say, I'm not voting for Donald Trump. I'm voting for a worldview, that duplicity, that inconsistency, and, and among other things that MacArthur have said before. And I'm saying these are major issues and serious concerns that affect the church. Because when you are in a position of influence, in a position of, of power, what you say carries weight to those who may not be discerning. So to, to make statements like that and it goes unchecked, goes unchecked, 
When I say it goes unchecked, it goes unchecked by the Phil Johnsons. It goes unchecked by the Daryl Bernard Harrisons. It goes unchecked by the Todd Frios. It goes unchecked by whoever that's in that circle. It goes unchecked. Because some of these brothers are quick to blast and quick to talk about uh, the Gospel Coalition. They're quick to talk about uh, the social justice movement. They're, they're, they're quick to come out and, and, and post and put out podcasts and, and, and shows about this kind of stuff. But when it's MacArthur, when it's those that they like, they cover for them. And the Bible calls that favoritism. And it's a violation of James chapter two. So I'm going to read the letter from Gray's Anatomy. This was sent to to the university. And I'm not making it up because it's, it's, it's it, all you got to do is pull it up. You can pull it up right now. You'll see it. Um, it says, dear neighbor, ABC Studios will be in your neighborhood to film the TV show Gray's Anatomy on Tuesday, August 6th, 2019. Most of our filming is at Masters uh, University. However, we have one scene at 21610 Cleardale Street. Our base camp and crew parking will be at the Masters North Campus parking lot. All scenes involve dialogue only. And there will be no street closures, special effects, or loud noises. To accomplish our work, we are asking the city of uh, Santa Clarita. They should have said Santa Clarita, but it says Santa Clarity. And 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 for those who try to dis discard this and discredit it, say, "Well, see, they only have the city right." I've already talked to several individuals who either live there or are familiar with the area, and some people say that people confuse Santa Clarita with Santa Clara. They confuse them. They'll misspell it. They'll mispronounce it. They misstate it. So. It doesn't take away from the fact that this letter says that they're going to be at the campus. It definitely doesn't take away from the fact that the staff themselves said that the, that the filming crew are going to be on their site, on their campus, filming their episode. It says, to accomplish our work, we're asking the city of Santa Clarita, it should have been said that, to let us move into our base camp at 4 a.m. and to start our work an hour early at 6 a.m. as opposed to the standard 7 a.m. We have a small crew of only 65. It is very important to us to hold every neighborhood with utmost respect and consideration when we are working. Here's what they say. Here's what they said. Our goal is to always be invited back. Now, my Bible says, and I'm going to read some statements from John MacArthur, that he did a series regarding, regarding our involvement with the world and how we as Christians are not to be unequally yoked with the world. John MacArthur did a three-part series called separating from unbelievers. And he preached it in 1995. So now fast forward to what we are in 2019. What changed? Did the Bible change? Did the word of God change? Or did MacArthur change? And some of you will say, well, he's no longer, you know, the president. He's no longer, you know. Yeah, they did, Jonathan. They did. They did. I'm, I'm going to play the audio. I'm going to play the audio. I'm going to play the audio in just a moment. Fast forward to what we are now in 2019. What has changed? The word of God hasn't changed. The word of God is clear on how we ought to respond. The word of God is clear that we're not to partner with the world when it comes to spiritual matters, when it comes to any type of business. We don't yoke ourselves up with the world. You don't partner with the ungodly and put the church's name and, and Christ's name Connected with that of darkness and Gray's anatomy. Come on. I mean, really? So uh, we all know the verse, 2 Corinthians 6, 14 through 17. Do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Right. For what fellowship? What fellowship has uh, light with darkness? He asks those rhetorical questions and I'll just read it. We're commanded in scripture on how we are not to align ourselves with those who are unbelievers. Do not be 
unequally yoked or bound together with unbelievers. For what partnership has righteousness with lawlessness or what fellowship has light with darkness or what harmony has Christ with Belial? Or what has a believer in common with an unbeliever? So how do you defend this? How, how do you defend such inconsistency? And even, even I'll go as far as to say hypocrisy, because I'm going to read MacArthur's quote. Uh, It says, and this is part one, separating from unbelievers. Religious cooperation between the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light is ridiculous. Why would we want to give Satan access? Listen, this is what John MacArthur said. Why do we want to give Satan access? Well, you give Satan access when you allow him to come onto your campus, come onto church property, come onto into God's house. And film episodes, even if it is dialogue, you're 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 presenting, you're giving off the wrong message. But the statement that was given and the and the response that was uh, provided on why they're doing this shows you and I more than what a lot of you and some of you who will watch this video later are willing to admit that this is about money. This is about an agenda that does not please God. And it's proven based on the recording. But MacArthur says this. He says, why would we want to give Satan access? You say, is, is, this, is this a problem? MacArthur says, is this a problem? He said, this is Satan's number one ploy. He said, I remember when I was a student in college in 1955, I was confronted with the fact that a huge, massive evangel evangel evangelistic excuse me, endeavors were being held in America. And the committees were made of Christians and non-Christians, people who believed the Bible and people who denied the Bible and who were theological liberals. And I wasn't particularly profound, believe me, at that age. I was still in high school, actually, in 55. I didn't graduate until 57. But it was in those years I was asking, how could they do that? How can they do that? I don't understand how you can bring unbelievers and believers together in a common spiritual enterprise. It doesn't make any sense. I mean, why would you invite Satan? This is this is. MacArthur's words. He says, continuing, we still have that today. Satan still endeavors to encroach. Recently, we had the Promise Keepers event in Los Angeles. And right around the time of the Promise Keepers, I picked up the L.A. Times and found that the Cardinal, the Catholic Cardinal, had affirmed everything about the Promise Keepers and encouraged all the parish priests to take all their men. That was followed in an article, I think a day later, by the local Mormon bishop who said that he was all, he was encouraging all the Mormons to go. What does that say about promise keepers? Nothing. What does it say? What it says about Satan is everything. That's always been his approach. He doesn't want to fight it. He wants to what? He wants to join it. Yes, the show is very wicked, Amos. It supports a transgender, uh, LGBT, homosexual agenda. That's what it supports. That's what it supports. Blatantly supports it. Um, I'm continuing on reading. When he fights the church, it explodes and the blood of the martyrs becomes the seat of the church. When he joins the church, it dies. And he always wants to get involved in it. And witless, reckless, undiscerning believers think that an evangelistic strategy and embrace it. What folly? It's not an evangelistic strategy. It's slow suicide. Unbelievers and believers cannot be yoked in common spiritual enterprise. Truth and error cannot go together. They are opposite in nature. They are pulling in opposite directions. They are headed toward opposite goals. They are motivated by opposite desires. They are controlled by enemy leaders. We have to separate from non-Christians in every Every activity that has anything to do with the advancement of the gospel, they have they can have no part, no part at all. They can be on the receiving end, but that's it. End quote. Part two of separating from unbelievers by John MacArthur that he preached. He says this quote, and he's quoting from he's reading from Second Corinthians six fourteen through seventeen, and he says quoting. 
What Paul is saying is this. You cannot link up unbelievers in religious causes or religious enterprises. You cannot go to their worship and become a part of it. You can't make them a part of the kingdom of God. You can't engage them in anything that involves. Here are the categories. Here are the categories. You cannot you can't engage them in anything that involves ministry. I'm going to hang on this word teaching or worship where there's ministry teaching or worship. There has to be absolute separate uh, separation. I'm reading the transcript from uh, Grace to Use, John MacArthur's uh, sermon series, Separating from Unbelievers, and I'm reading from part two of the sermon transcript. Now, do you all think that Grey's Anatomy, ABC Studios, Chandra Rhymes, that they are teaching, that they are communicating a message when they air their shows on TV? Do you, do you believe that anytime we watch something, it's communicating a message? Yes or no? They're trying to indoctrinate. They're trying to influence. They're trying to teach. They want you and I to believe something. And, and, and I'm telling you right now, all you have to do is look at modern Christianity today. People are caving into the LGBT agenda. They're caving into it because they want to be accepted. They want to be received. They don't want to be seen as unloving. They don't want to be seen as homophobic. Instead of saying what scripture says, they're falling by the wayside and they're falling to the ways of popular thinking instead of the precepts and principles of God's word. Um, so MacArthur says there should be separation. We should have nothing to do with any institution, any type of involvement, no spiritual enterprise that would try to teach something that contradicts God's word. Well, what do you think Grace Anatomy is? I mean, just, just watch it. They promote everything that the Bible condemns. They try to make it appear as innocent when it is not. It's an affront. It's an attack against the kingdom of God. So why would, why would John MacArthur, why would uh, the Masters University, why would these people allow the world to come into the church? Oh, it's just a school. It's still God's school. They're preaching God's message. They're preaching God's word. What are they preaching? Home economics. They're preaching the word of God. And they're doing it in an academic setting. They're using the Bible to train men as their lives depend on it. Their motto says. So how do we biblically justify this? You can't biblically justify this at all. Because if that's the case, then. Why not have the... The producers and the and the people from Fifty Shades of Grey film on your campus. What 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 if what if the people from Fifty Shades of Grey wanted to do another movie and and they wanted to use the Masters uh, University they wanted to use Grace to uh, you or wanted to use Grace Community Church they wanted to use uh, John MacArthur's and their uh, church's campus to film scenes of just them walking. You know, walking along a, a a campus, not doing any sex scenes or nothing like that. But you all know, I haven't even seen uh, Fifty Shades of Grey, but I heard about it. I know what it's about, and so but not my Bible tells me, have nothing. Ephesians five eleven teaches us have nothing to do with the unfruitful deeds of darkness, but Rather, expose them. We're not to involve ourselves. We're not to immerse ourselves. We're not to provide a platform for anything that is an unfruitful deed of darkness. We're instead, we're not to make excuses for their deeds by giving them a platform. That's what you're doing when you're inviting them, them to film their show on your property as a church. Instead of making an excuse for them, you should expose them. 
No, ma'am. No, sir. I appreciate your desire to want to film on our campus, but this is God's campus. This is holy ground. And we don't invite hell and holiness to coexist. Thank you for your time. That's what you should say. So this does not line up biblically. It doesn't line up. It's inconsistent. And it's also hypocritical. In part three of the same sermon series that John MacArthur preached entitled Separating from Unbelievers, he says this, quote, in fact, the church today is trying very hard to embrace the culture and to redefine itself on a cultural level so that unbelievers feel comfortable there. An unmanageable strategy in the light of this principle. Throughout the years, evangelists have felt that they could be more successful when they go into a city if they will link up with the Roman Catholics and link up with the theological liberals of that city and together engage in a cooperative or cooperative, excuse me, evangelistic effort to supposedly evangelize the city. There have been Christians who have gone into theological faculties and various institutions and stood alongside unbelievers, alongside men who deny the inerrancy and authority of Scripture and sometimes the deity of Christ, of Jesus Christ, and deny the doctrines of salvation by grace through faith alone and all associated teaching to that. And they have stood side by side in the same institution with these men, endeavoring to carry on a spiritual enterprise while linked with those who espouse demonic doctrine. What do you think Gray's anatomy espouses? I haven't, I haven't even gotten to where I wanted to get to yet. I'm just taxiing right now. So just bear with me, people. Bear with me. Those are the kinds of issues that are at stake in this text. And the same text you're referring to is, is 2 Corinthians 6, 14 through 17. Cooperative evangelism, cooperative educational efforts in theological and quote unquote Christian schools and seminaries, environments linking up with churches that are pastored and led by liberals who deny the very truth that one affirms. People ask me this all the time. I'm in a liberal church, what should I do? Answer, leave immediately. People sometimes say to me, quote, I've come to know Christ. I'm in a Catholic church. What should I do? Answer, leave immediately. The indication of this text couldn't be more clear. Do not be bound together with unbelievers. And again, the context is a context of spiritual enterprise, spiritual activity, worship, teaching, teaching, evangelism and ministry. This is very prevalent today as evangelicalism reaches wider and wider and wider and wants to embrace the culture and make it feel comfortable, wants to re-embrace the Roman system and make it comfortable, wants to embrace liberalism, wants to embrace false teachers who are all over the place. And we who try to question, the, we who try to question that are seen as enemies of the church's unity, like myself. It is the corruption of Christianity by compromise. Mm. I read that again because I didn't say it. John MacArthur said it. Quote, it is the corruption of Christianity by compromise and disobedience of this principle. And it is so important that we understand this principle and that we hear what the spirit of God has to say in it. End of quote. Now, here's a question I want to ask. I'll ask it in a minute. I'm going to play this and then I'll ask the question because it'll flow right with what I'm wanting to say. Um, someone contacted the, the Masters University and spoke with one of the staff members there and uh, wanted to know, number one, is the letter that has been circulating online regarding the Master's Seminary, the Master's University, excuse me, the Master's University um, hosting and facilitating and welcoming uh, 
Grey's Anatomy and ABC Studios to their campus to film an episode. And in this audio, you're going to hear for yourself what transpired. So I'm going to play the audio now and you can hear it. Sorry to keep you waiting. I just uh, spoke to someone in our uh, administration. And um, so, yes, we have Grey's Anatomy is filming next week on our campus. Um, I was not personally aware of the social media posts. Right. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, wow. So that's on the 6th of um, August? Yes. Okay. Got it. And the church is okay with that? Uh, well, I personally don't know about the church's connection. Um, just in talking with our administration, um, they said that they're they're beta testing uh, ways to drive revenue on campus, and and uh, you know this is the first time we've done anything like this, so it's just a, a beta test to see how it goes. Um, okay, so. maybe I misunderstood then. So Grace, to you, John MacArthur's church is not linked to the Masters University. No, they are. Um, I mean, obviously, John MacArthur is, is our chancellor and, and the pastor of Grace Community. Um, Does he know about this? Or 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 that's too low level. You know, I since I'm not involved in the planning process for this, I, I don't personally know. Um, it is it. This is the president's office. Now that he's the chancellor, this office doesn't uh, work for Dr. MacArthur directly, and so I don't have a lot of communication with him. I see. Okay, so possibly this could be scheduled, could have been scheduled without his knowledge. I, I just can't say for sure um, because I wasn't I wasn't involved in that process. Okay. Well, you understand how it's concerning because because of the uh, the genre of that that show, and I hear they're filming transgender. And he's preaching against transgenderism, but yet he's facilitating uh, the shooting of that material to be shown to the masses. Well, I know that just in talking with our administration, they said that they're they're thinking through those issues. Um, to my knowledge, nothing that is going to be filmed on our campus on our campus would support any of those things, but. Um, okay. Um, I'm sorry, in, in your name and your title? And I'm the executive assistant to the president's office. Okay. But you think John McGuffin is no longer the president? Um, no, he, he became the chancellor at, at the end of the school year in May. Oh. Um, and our current president is John Stead. Uh, who's a, a long-time administrator and professor here at Masters. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Well, thanks for your help on this. Um, I find it a little disheartening that, you know, we, that you guys would facilitate such a show, but yet preach against it, that type of behavior, according to the Word of God, and then facilitate the property, your property, to film such a thing. Well, thank you, thank you for for expressing your concern. I, I'll certainly let the administration know. Um, but I, unfortunately, I, as since I'm not involved with the process, I there's not much else that I can I can offer other than that. I understand. All right. Thanks for your help. Thank you. Bye bye. You're welcome. Bye. Mm -hmm. Uh, did y'all hear that? First of all, what is beta testing? I, I, I don't know what that is. This is my first time ever hearing that. Uh, I do not know what beta testing means um, other than it being a, a weak excuse to do what you want. Uh, and then also, you heard their reason. You heard the reason why uh, they're doing this. To increase revenue for the school. Now, this this representative, this uh, staff member, she may not be aware 
uh, of this being um, this not being the, the the schools or the administrations or the faculty or the churches first time. This is not the first time that they've done this. This is not the first time they've done this. Uh, they've done it before. They've they've had the world to come in to do commercials. Um, you say it sounds like testing an app. Uh, yeah. Um, Jennifer Garner has gone to the school, uh, has been on their campus rather, uh, to film or to do a Capital One commercial. I'll play that one. You just you can just hear the audio. But in the background, she's she's at the she's at the uh, the coffee house at the ch at the church, right there at the coffee house. The Bible says in First Timothy chapter six verse ten, for the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil, and compromise and worldliness are one of them. I'm gonna play this audio. Uh, you can actually go online, and if you have been to, uh, if you've been to Grace Community Church, if you've been to uh, either the seminary or the university, you know they have coffee. They have a coffee house at the church on the church grounds where this was filmed, and and and, and several sources have come to me, and 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 one in particular have even told me that uh, they have security there, protecting Jennifer Garner. They didn't want anyone, you know, uh, uh, you know. Interacting with her, uh, they had to keep people away. Uh, so you know, at a church, Capital One. So the reason why they did it was for increasing revenue for the school. But this is Capital One. This was this was filmed uh, over quarter, I believe, uh, two years ago, either twenty between twenty sixteen twenty seventeen. She came there uh, on the site. And uh, did the commercial, and I'll I'll, uh, I'll play this, and then I'll ask the question that I meant to ask you all, and maybe I'll give you a better answer than what I can get. Can I give it to you straight? That airline credit card you have, it could be better. It's time to shake things up. With the Capital One Venture Card, you get double miles on everything you buy, not just airline purchases. Seriously, think of all the things you buy. Great. Is this why you asked me to coffee? Well, yeah, but also to catch up. <laughs> what's in your wallet? Now, at the end where she says, what's in your wallet? They do a, a pretty full shot, a clear shot of, uh, of the background of the, uh, of the campus. You can check it out for yourself. If you've been there like I've been there, yeah, that was there. So. I've, I've, I've spoken with people uh, who have attended the school, the seminary, have, have, have been members of the church. And, and so uh, there's a lot of compromise, a lot of worldliness uh, that have crept in to that place. Uh, you wouldn't know that because of, of the of the the image that's being pro that's being projected. Um, and this is this is what we are. Are warned against. So. He says, well, I'm lost at the notion of that because no act that contradicts the Bible will be done on the campus. So it'll be okay to proceed. The school has no business allowing Hollywood. I, I, yeah, exactly, Jonathan. Uh, Rob, I'm not really sure what you mean about it. Maybe you can explain it a little bit better. But um, we're, we're not to partner with the world. It sends the wrong message. Because if that's the case, then what if what if Spike Lee wanted to come? What if, what if Spike Lee wanted to... Um, um, Wanted to film Malcolm X on the campus. I'm just, I'm just asking. Let's just, let's just, let's just be real here. What, what if, what if Tyler Perry wanted to film one of his Madea uh, movies on the campus? Because he, he does cross dressing. He transgenderizes himself when he plays Madea. What if he wanted to, you know, come on? the uh the campus would that be okay because if you if you're saying it's okay to do it for for Grey's Anatomy who clearly presents an agenda and promotes an agenda that violate God's word then what's what's 
what's to say, what's the reason why you can't and you wouldn't do it for the other ones? This is why God makes it clear that we are not to be conformed to this world. Romans 12, 2. Do not be conformed to this world. Peter tells us that we are to be holy in all our behavior. James tells us that we're to keep ourselves unstained by the world in James 1.27. Second Chronicles 19.2 says, here, I'll just read it. Because should you help the wicked and love those who hate the Lord? You're helping the other side. You're helping to promote their agenda. Well, they're not doing any sex scenes. It doesn't matter. It's what they're known for. It's what they are about. They're, a, they're about an ungodly movement that goes against everything the church of Jesus Christ supports. That's what, they, that's what they're about. Remember Isaiah, he speaks for the Lord. The Lord speaks to Isaiah and says, woe to those who go down to Egypt for help. You just heard the, the, the phone conversation. The reason why they're doing this is for money. You know, that, 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 that um, accreditation audit that, that you know, MacArthur and the, and the school had, they had a lot of sightings. They had a lot of sightings and a lot of things that was against them. And, and they've lost money. And that's been proven as well. Lost money. Lost lots of money. And, and so you can see the reasons why. It's not, it's not right, but you see the reason why they're doing what they're doing. Robert, you said she said that nothing wrong would be done on the campus. So it seems that it is OK to proceed with this, even though there's their agenda is I got. Yes. Yes, I agree. Yeah, I, yeah, absolutely. Robert. Yes. Thank you for clarifying that, brother. Appreciate that. Um, but here's my question. OK, here's my question. You can you can check it for yourself. You know, take my word for it. So you facilitate and host and open your doors and allow the enemy of our souls and the enemies of God to come on your campus to film an episode. But MacArthur, the staff, including Phil Johnson, because he's one of the elders and staff members there. But MacArthur and you guys refused or canceled your uh, the council to have the gospel coalition to come to your church and your campus for a conference. I'm, I'm trying to understand how, how does that line up? So it's okay to invite the world, but it's not okay to invite fellow believers who you may have differences of viewpoints regarding the word of God on. So you, you don't, you, you, you cancel, you pull back your invitation to facilitate and to host the gospel coalition at your church, on your property, at your campus. You cancel that. But you allow the world, you allow Satan to come in and film episodes. My question is, can someone... Explain that to me. Where you show favor, you show favoritism to the world, but not to the church. My Bible tells me, hmm, I'll read it because I don't want anybody to think I'm making this up, even though it's right here in Galatians chapter 6, verse 10. Oh, yeah, right here. So then, while we have opportunity, let us do good to all men and especially to those who are of the household of the faith. That means we have special preference. First of all, we don't open our doors up for the ungodly. Second of all, the church is not for the world. The church is for believers. Third of all, if there is something that is Needed, And if there's something that we are to do, we are to do for our brethren who make up the body of Christ. 
we're more connected to each other spiritually than we are to our blood relatives naturally. So it seems to me that there, there's some violations in the text. There's some sins that have yet to be confessed and yet to be addressed. So you tell the world to come on in, come on in, come on in. But you tell those who are our brothers and sisters in Christ, no, stay away, stay away, stay away. Because of your views on social justice, because this person uh, uh, we believe is a social justice warrior. Uh, this person we believe is an SJW. This person we believe is a, is a, is a, is a Marxist. I've heard people say this. So you, you cancel, you cancel the Gospel Coalition Conference held that was scheduled to be held at Grace Church, but you allow the enemy to come into God's church on God's property to film episodes that overall present an ungodly, wicked agenda. Somebody got to help me understand that. And if y'all can't see how this, once again, is compromised. And once again, this is a cover up. And some of you will go as far as defending this because you love John MacArthur, because you love grace to you. You Listen, when we're wrong, we're wrong. This is wrong. This is sin. This is ungodly. Hey, Lucy. This is giving the enemy room to move. And why? Money. I didn't make it up. It's on the phone. It's in the phone conversation. They said the reason why they did it is to increase revenue for the school. My Bible tells me God is the one that supplies our needs. He says, the blessing of the Lord make it rich and he add no sorrow to it. And if he's the one that provides, then he will use godly means for that provision. We don't go to the wicked and compromise with the wicked to get God's blessing. No, no. And in fact, in fact, remember, that's the same that's the same game that Satan tried to play with Jesus, which is dumb. Satan told Jesus, look, I, I, look, I own all this. If you bow down to me, I give it to you. And what is happening? God's people are bowing down to Satan for money. For money. Now, you know what this should tell us? And what this should teach us, we need to be careful ourselves. We, we, we need to be very careful ourselves with how we see compromise. Because if, if we're not careful, we can fall prey to the same thing. So this is not me sitting on my high horse, but this is me saying, hey, this is wrong. Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you. Thank you. I got one person agreeing with me. Thank you, sir. Um, you said, have we gotten an official statement for such a high ranking person for, from a high ranking person? No, there has not been in a statement. And I'm, I'm waiting on Phil Johnson. He said I saw someone respond to him and tag him on Twitter. He said that he uh, was on the East Coast and had not been um, on Twitter. But he, here's here's why. Here's why this bothers me. And here's another reason why this bothers me. Um, Phil Johnson and Todd Friel did a, a podcast on Michael Brown, Dr. Michael Brown. And they called Dr. Michael Brown dangerous because of his affiliation with people that they consider to be false teachers and things like that. Now, um, they called this man who's a brother in Christ because they disagree with him and they vehemently disagree with him. 
They called him dangerous. Not only did they call Dr. Michael Brown dangerous, they said that they would tell people to avoid Michael Brown because of his quote unquote affiliation with those who are heretics and false teachers. Now, here, here's, here's my question. How dangerous does John MacArthur have to be? How dangerous does the master's seminary, the master's university, grace to you, grace community church have to be before we avoid them? I'll wait. How dangerous do they have to be? What, what, what threshold do they have to cross? Because by that standard that Phil Johnson and Todd Friel gave to Michael Brown, then shouldn't that same energy and that same weight and that same pressure be given to John McArthur, be given to Phil Johnson? Who, who, who publicly said, people like R.L. Dabney, Phil Johnson said, is his favorite theologian. And anybody that knows anything about R.L. Dabney knows that he was a racist. Just read some of his writings. He considered black people as savages and animals. And he was a theologian who Phil Johnson said publicly. That's his favorite theologian. Mm -hmm. See, this is why people don't like me. And I don't care. Because what is right is right. What is wrong is wrong. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I don't care. But I'm not going to sit back and let God's people be deceived because of who's who. I'm not going to sit back and shut my mouth because some of us are more concerned about man's response instead of the son of man's response. You, 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 are, you are rather want people to pat you on the back instead of hearing the son of God say, well done, a good and faithful servant. I'm not, I'm not of that, I'm not of that cloth. I'm not cut from that cloth. I'm cut from a different cloth. I strive to be consistent. This is not about perfection. This is about direction, Holy Spirit direction. And this is wrong, people. Now, should a statement be given? It should be one of repentance. That's the only statement that should be given. But based on this phone conversation, and this is just one of the phone conversations that I've, that I've had that was given to me. There, there have been others who contacted the school and they heard the same thing, same script. This is about money. So what makes the Masters University, <laughs> here we go, here we go. Let me take a sip of this one because I'm about to knock some of y'all off your, your, your horse. What makes the Masters University any different than Creflo Dollar? Any different than T.D. Jakes? Any different? Yeah, tag him. Tag him. Tag Daryl Bernard Harrison. Tag Ty Friel. Tag them all. That's why I made it public. That's why I made it public, dear. Tag them all. Phil sees me. Phil, Phil I, I, I interacted with Phil on Twitter. He saw, my, he saw my, my, me tagging the thread on, on Twitter. He know what this is about. Tag him. I would like to know, Daryl. I would like to know. How is it that Grey's Anatomy is filmed, is planning to be filmed at your place of business, but no one is pushing back on this in a public statement? Daryl Bernard Harrison is the dean of social media. So he's in charge of what goes on and what gets put out there in social media. I, I, I would like an answer. As a fellow brother in Christ, I think that we all deserve an answer for that. Todd Friel, he calls John MacArthur the evangelical pope. 
I would like Todd Friel to, to answer and to give a biblical response to such an inconsistency. I, I, I want to hear from Phil Johnson offer a public statement. You know, these, these brothers, these men were, were proud to post their endorsement of the statement concerning social justice and the gospel. I, I want to see if you're going to have that same, that same zeal and that same energy to know that a show that goes against the scriptures as Grey's Anatomy is being filmed at your place of institution. I, I just want to know, biblically, how do, how do you defend that? How do you defend that, sir? How do y'all defend that, brother? You can see, again, low-hanging fruit is it's easy to pick. Low-hanging fruit is, is always easy to pick. It's always easy to, to, to pick at the Joel Osteens and the and the Joyce Myers and the Creflo Dollars and the TDJ. But what happens when, when it's on your tree or on my tree? And you and you and I have that fruit way up there. Are you, are, are we willing to call it what it is then? Or are we gonna make excuses for it? And I I hear a lot more of excuses within reformed circles than I hear from non-reformed circles. You know, it's funny, people want to talk about Joshua Harris and his apostasy. People want to talk about him falling away and leaving the faith. And we got people in our own camp that are causing people to sin and have the potential to fall away. Because allowing such a TV show to come on your campus, it is sending the wrong picture. It is sending the wrong message with how the church is to be separate from the world. And that's why I read those quotes from those sermons, because they contradict everything that MacArthur has taught, everything that MacArthur has stood for. It's being, it's being washed away. No, not Derrick Kendrick. Derrick Kendrick is past. He's he's gone over with the Lord, sister. Talking about Derrick Bernard Harrison. Derrick Bernard Harrison is the uh, dean of social media. I I would like to hear from them. I would like to hear them do a podcast. I would like to go on their show, but I know that's not gonna happen. I know that's not gonna happen. But I would love to. I'm a fellow brother in Christ. I have concerns. I have issues that I would like to have addressed that I see inconsistencies go on in our body. And we need to, as brethren, as sisters, deal with. Because, yeah, the church is watching. The church is watching. The world is watching as well on how we, on how we respond to this. So, anyway, I'm done. About to get ready for dinner. I'm done. Um, Y'all know how to reach out to me. Uh, you can inbox me. If you have any questions about it, again, you can go online. You can pull up the information. You can pull up the information. Just type uh, Grey's Anatomy at the Masters University. Pull it up. You'll see it. You'll see the letter there. Um, and the reason, again, why it has not gotten any traction is because it's, you know, it just came out just a couple days ago. But they're, they're coming to Grace Church. They're coming to the seminary or the university. They're coming to their campus to film the episode. They already sent out the letter. The, the, the faculty already know that they're coming and they are welcoming them there. So anyway, uh, reach out to me if you like. Inbox me. Um, uh, you can do that. If you have any questions, uh, I'll try to respond in, in, uh, in a convenient time. So anyway, you guys enjoy your weekend. Enjoy your Lord's Day. You know the drill. Whatever you do. Do all to glory and honor God. God bless.